It's the headline alone, the clickbait alone makes an imprint. That is part of how we start to view the world, how we interact with other people. And I think there's so much toxicity out there um, in, in what is being referred to, my husband and I talk about it often, this economy for attention, right? That is what is monetizable right now when you're looking at the digital space and media. And so if you're just trying to grab someone's attention and keep it, you're going for something salacious versus something truthful. And I think that once we can get back to the place, which is what you're creating here, which is why I think it's so important, where people are just telling the truth in their reporting and telling it through a compassionate or empathetic lens, it's going to help bind people as community in a way that I think the moment we're feeling much more of a disconnect in a space where we could be feeling more of a connection. I mean, I'm, I'm curious what it has been like for you coming back to the United States, you know, in this moment as a biracial woman in this in this moment of all these conversations around race and justice. What has that felt like for you? If I can turn the tables for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, you know, I touched on this uh, a couple months ago, actually, right when I had come back and I. I said a few words for my high school alma mater for their graduating class because I had come back after being away for so long and because really I haven't lived in the States for almost 10 years. I lived in Canada for seven years for work. So it's a really long lapse in time from being here. And to come back and to just see the state of affairs, I think at the onset, if I'm being honest, it was just devastating. It was so sad to see where our country was in that moment. And if there's any silver lining in that, I would say that in the weeks that were happening after the murder of George Floyd, in the peaceful protests you were seeing, in the voices that were coming out, in the, in the way that people were actually owning their role and acknowledging their role that they played while either actively or passively in the discrimination of, of other people, specifically of the black community, it shifted from sadness to a feeling of, of absolute inspiration because I can see that the tide is turning. And I think for so many of us, it's very easy to focus on the negativity. It's very easy to focus on that because it's what you hear out there, right? Uh, as I think I, I said to the high school girls when I was speaking to them, the loudest voices are often the negative ones, sadly. So I think, you know, from my standpoint, it's not new to see this undercurrent of racism and certainly unconscious bias. But I think to see the changes that are being made right now is really, it's, um, it's something that I look forward to being a part of um, and being a part of using my voice in a way that I haven't been able to of late. So yeah, it's good to be home. We're all ready for it too. <laughs> it's good to be home. Um,